Listen, I will put it out there. This isn't like, oh, oh great call, Zeb. The next Steber, the next Spencer Lee, Bo Bassett. Bo Bassett. Bo, oh. <laughs> Bo Bassett. Oh, what, what you, oh my god what he takes um, down and just turn and pin oh my god dude he, he hit a head lever right. he hit a head lever it's on my instagram bo bassett hit a head lever dude i i i was i've never seen it i couldn't i don't know if i could teach a head lever like he did it wasn't that kid a pjw champ some, I could be wrong, but Bo Bassett, sort of, I think, won everything. No, he, the he, kid he did it on. The yes, yeah, yes. So it's I like, was like, oh my god. <laughs> yes, it's not like the dude was a Joe Bag of Donuts. He was another nationally ranked <laughs> right, guy. Right. And I was like, uh, uh, I would, I was, dude, I was in awe. I was, it was shock and awe. I felt yeah. like I was watching it, and then he was like, I only caught him like twice. One time it was like out of the corner of my and eye. Seventh grade, right? Oh, he's a seventh grader, and he is incredible. I don't know. His cousin might actually be better. Mason Gibson is is unreal. Mason Gibson's a little different because Mason Gibson's like uh, Dom Dimas is kind of like he doesn't do all the crazy throws, but yeah. how he's built and just kind of he's crazy built like that. Like literally, he's like yeah. a very similar build to Dom Dimas. And dude, Bo Bassett, this head lover. Dude, he had his From arm. Downtown, and he, right? Oh my god! I was like, oh, felony times it. ten, yeah. life in prison. <laughs> what are you quick. doing, man? It was quick. Yeah, and then I follow. So I follow him. Um, it's Bassett Brothers, and um, Tim and his brother, brother I thinks a fifth grader. Um, he's incredible as well. But um, they train in the morning. It looks like it almost looks like a basement. I don't know where they're training. Okay. But um, it's the compound, uh, uh, Johnstown. And, uh, yeah, man, they are just like, he is, I, I don't even feel like this isn't like a, wow, Zab, you just, uh, oh, good job. You uh, invented bifocals. Good job, Ben Franklin. <laughs> you know, not like that. I'm saying, like, he is, wow, I'm so impressed yeah. when I watch him. And it's like, just yeah, man. Like he, he is unreal. And then Asher Cunningham. Okay. Asher Cunningham for M2, which is Casey's son. Okay. He lost a match to Jax Forrest. Jax Forrest is from, um, he's from Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and he was on the dynasty team. Mm -hmm. And they were the weight above uh, Bo Bassett. Okay. And, um, Cunningham's kid and the Forrest kid are just like, they're both really good. Really good. Oh uh, yeah, like uh, when I'm watching it, it's like watching college wrestling and national middle school duels. I'm but like, they're in middle school. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this is unreal. Okay, so like we don't even you, listen. I don't even like. We can just start off. What what did you shoot that thing with? Yeah, it was a wild hog, and I shot it with a 270 rifle. Okay, so you shot it with a 270. How far away were you? Ooh. Mm, 30 yards maybe 20 30 yeah i don't even know how you how do you you're a helicopter uh, or what were you in no i wasn't in a helicopter i was in okay. the ground okay. um they do yeah. that though. they do do that they do do that yeah and they also do it with dogs where the dogs run him down and the dogs pins it down and then you come up and once the dog like has it like tired out you run up with a knife and you kill it really yeah Whoa. john j rambo style John yeah. J. Rambo style, first blood. I'm just telling you, he was up in a tree and he jumped down on it with a Rambo knife and a spear. That's a thing that they did in the, the John J. Rambo. You know what? Wow. He's a drifter. You got to be, you got to watch John J. Rambo, but apparently they're doing that in Texas. That isn't what? Is that yeah. your first time? Where were you? That is, that was, it was my first hog kill. Yes. Okay. Where were you? Uh, about an hour and a half outside of um, Austin, Myersville, Myers, Myersville. Okay. Some guy's ranch. He has like a 1200 acres. He said, Oh, wow. So, okay. So you, 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 sh does it, were you in a blind? Were you in a tree stand? What, how, how did you, you didn't do the tucker it out with a dog. You didn't do helicopter. What was the style that the, you guys did with, with the hogs? Uh, so I got to walk, I got to walk around a little bit and then I sat in a blind. So, yeah. And it just rolled up on you. Yeah. Um, there were some Buffalo too. He was like, so the guy told me, he's like, 
don't shoot whatever you don't plan to like <laughs> take out of here. So I was like trying to maneuver around the Buffalo too. Cause I was like, uh, okay, <laughs> I definitely don't want to shoot one of those. I mean, it would be cool. Right. But like, no. <laughs> so you traditionally hunt or is that your first kind of hunting experience or. So I have been, um, what are those birds called? Uh, not quail. What are those pheasant, other birds? Pheasant. pheasant. Thank you. I've been pheasant hunting, but uh, besides that, yeah, the hog hunt a was little, uh, a little difference there, right? Yeah, <laughs> it was fun though. Yeah, that's okay. Wild. So, so you um, you've had a busy. Obviously, you were at the event in Austin, right? Is that how all this came about? Yeah, uh, yeah, I was out here for wrestling, and then yeah, I was like, wow, wow, I'm out here, might as well go hog hunting. So, <laughs> so awesome. Uh, the event, the 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 flow wrestling event that you were in, um, Ali Reagan, right? That was your opponent. Yep. Okay, so these paid events, right? You're in another one coming up too, right? Uh, it's not official yet. We're still working out details, so. Okay, so there's potentially another one. Let's just say potentially then, right? Potentially, yes. And then. And then, so like, what's awesome is we're in a pandemic and you're able to do all this wrestling, right? Things maybe don't go your way uh, Saturday night, right? Things don't yeah. go your way. But I want to talk about a Hail Mary. I really want to talk about a Hail Mary. I want to talk about a lefty headlock. I Now I got your, I got your game. <laughs> Next time I, we, we like, I like see you, Lauren. Cause I think I saw you at Steve's Iron Sharp and Iron Camps, right? You and yeah. McDonald, Coach McDonald were working out, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to know the left-handed headlock's coming. <laughs> talk okay. about that were you down but were you down by four what were you down by uh i think two. i was only down by two, two. two. was it two okay yeah. so you didn't, I, you didn't need that? a four pointer right no would two have given you criteria yes okay so but uh, you went you went big I, and i didn't you know everyone's like oh you know all the headlock it wasn't planned at all like i so i was just like telling myself to attack you know I was just like look like I was like looking for the opening look for the opening looking for the opening and um you know I I felt the urgency like hey I need to do something here but it wasn't like I need to go big now ah you know and uh but that's just what presented itself I would have attacked the legs if you, you know if if in my mind it was available um but that was what was there to me so I was like oh I've been in this position before let's go so yeah. Take what she gives you, right? Yeah. And it didn't, it was like smooth. You pinned her too, didn't you? Yeah. That was crazy. How much was it? 20 seconds left? Yeah. I I, uh, I think there was 30 before when I hit it. And then I hit it. And I think when I pinned her, there was 20 seconds left. I was so pumped. I was like, I have her shirt. This is amazing. <laughs> I'm not going to wear it for the second show that I do with her, but I have her shirt. I got Lauren's shirt. We'll have to get that you the new awesome. black ones. Josh has new black ones out. <laughs> well, of course, you know, I need that now for then when the next time we get you on the show, I can get on. I think I got, was this Nate Jackson one? The Nate Jackson one. Oh, nice. This nice. is cool. This is the cram one. When yeah. he, uh, freight train double legs you. Uh, I, yeah, he, <laughs> I just saw him freight train double leg our last guest, uh, Reese, Coach uh, Humphrey. <laughs> oh, Humphrey. Yeah. Did you guys, he does some pretty awesome social media posts. Um, He's pretty cool. Yeah, I like Reese. Reese is cool. Um, so, so Lauren, you have an event like that. You go to the Flow Wrestling event. You win the U.S. Open. Congratulations, by the way. I know we were talking about, you know, not really a Hail, Hail Mary, but, you know, you you hit a headlock. And, you know, we talk. And first thing a lot of coaches teach at the youth level is headlocks. And that's what I kids so naturally much, go for. I get so much trash on social media. Big mistake. I read some of the Flow comments. I was like, why did I read those? Bad idea, right? <laughs> People are like, JV move, who hits those? I'm like, if it won a U.S. Open title, it won a U.S. Open right, title. Right, right. <laughs> How many stop signs is that, Lauren? <laughs> That's my first one. That your first oh. full stop sign. Congratulations. Yeah. That's so awesome. Thanks. I was so pumped when I saw it. I was like, this is amazing. I was Thanks. like, y'all and I have her shirt. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I wore your shirt this weekend uh, to uh, back to my hometown of Oak Harbor. And oh, uh, nice. Yeah, I had the shirt on and I, I was like just pumped because um I was just pumped because first off, you're a really good person. That's I think that's my favorite thing. You're a BA athlete. This is the barbarian hour. So, you know, it all it really makes sense, you know, and you're a Northeast Ohio person. I live in Northeast Ohio. So talking to you has always been a, a pleasure. But uh we talked to Reese last week 
And the big thing we talked about, Lauren, and it seems to be you're gaining momentum, you're you're winning U.S. Open titles. How important is it to, uh, you know, and you and I talked this summer as well, marketing yourself and getting into these events and getting your name out there and more shirts and merchandise and Lauren Louise, Lauren Louise, believe in Louise. And, you know, 2021 is coming up, Tokyo. How important is it marketing yourself? You know, it, it depends on, you know, you know, what your goal is. And, you know, I want to continue to coach and things like that, that afterwards. So I, um, I think marketing is important to me and for what I want to do and continue to do after I'm done as an athlete. Um, but the other thing is, and it was made aware to me when I was at Iowa, um, one of the things was, you know, it, accepting help. It, it was hard for me at first to accept help, you know, and um, I had a host family and things like that. And, and someone along the way told me, they said, people, uh, you know, I, I, I think it was this, I worked for a contractor. I was working like three or four jobs when I was at Iowa. It was crazy. And so I finally quit and just decided to be a wrestler full time. Um, but <laughs> I was working like three or four jobs and I was working for this contractor and I totally messed up everything. I, I'm not good at like that kind of stuff at all. Like he put me on the demo jobs and like tearing down walls and stuff and I would still mess something up. And anyhow, um, he paid me double of what I, what I actually earned and that week or that two weeks. And I like, it, you know, it made me cry. And I was like, I was like, Oh, and he's like, stop being such a girl, you know? And, um, he's like, listen, we want, we want to support you. We want to help you. We want to help you achieve your goals. Like, let us, like people want to be a part of your journey. And he told me, he said, you don't think that I had goals and dreams. He was a wrestler too. He said, you don't think I had goals and dreams to be an Olympic athlete I wanted that too and I I quit before before I ever got to where you are and so I want to support you and help you so you know people want to be a part of your journey and I think as athletes we need to realize that more and the more that we can make people feel and be a part of our journey you know the the more inspiring that is to others also you know uh, yeah yeah I'm the one over here doing it but I couldn't do it without the help of all of those people that, that's and, awesome yeah. So just, so just accepting that help and allowing others to help you and to be a part of your journey, to join you. No one wants to do this by themselves. You get to the top and then you're like, okay, now I did it. I did it alone. <laughs> like, yeah. Right. So, That's yeah. awesome. Are there any, I mean, you're, you know, you know, hitting the, the prime of your career, right. And, you know, is there any young, uh, you know, women wrestlers that you're kind of helping along uh, with yeah. their, who are some of those uh, yeah, athletes? so actually, um, so I have a butcher sponsor. He's completely awesome. Maddie Moose Custom Meats in Indiana. Okay. And um, he has a daughter and she just turned 12, I believe, 11 or 12, Maddie. And um, so I'm actually going to go and help her prepare for a competition. So oh, nice. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, man. so I, I get to work with her every once in a while. And then, you know, I get hired for camps and clinics and usually those kids come back to other mm -hmm. camps and clinics and I see them along the way and they hit me up on social media and they're like, Hey, I'm having problems with my weight or I'm ha do you have a suggestion for this or that? And so it, it's really cool. And then to see them later on at a tournament and they'll run up and give me a hug and tell me how they're doing or stuff. It's, it's really cool to be a part of their journey as well. And to watch them grow as athletes and people too. Yeah. That, Cause that's some concerns. I know, um, you know, the girls, you know, coaches have a concern with the, the explosion of how many girls wrestlers are. Is there going to be enough girls coaches? Not that you have to be a girl to coach a girl, but, you know, sometimes you can connect better, you know, female to female, you know, so it, that's yeah. cool that you're kind of taking those athletes under your wing. That's awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Current training situation. When I talked to you last time this summer, it was Colorado Springs. Is that mm -hmm. the same training situation? I think I just saw a really cool Halloween video. <laughs> Who was in the Halloween video with you? Uh, okay, so it was myself, uh, Tamara Mensa Stock, and Jakara Winchester. They're the uh, 2019, this past world championships, uh, world champions. And so we did a shot sled video, and it was a lot of fun. But yes, my current training situation is still the Olympic Training Center. And that was the Halloween edition. Stay tuned. There will be more shot sled videos. <laughs> That was like awesome. I like. I was like, this is awesome. I sent it to some of my friends. I'm like, Lauren is the best. Were you Captain? Who were you, Captain Marvel? Who, who were you? Captain America. <laughs> you were Captain America. Oh, my Ferdinand that came in for uh, the cameo appearance. He was Captain America as well. And oh. uh, yeah, he he uh, he was like, 
into Captain America and then he had to get the suit. Your suit was really cool. And then what were they? What was she, one of them was Wonder Woman, right? Jakara was Wonder Woman and then Tamara was a villain. There was no no specific villain. She was just an evil villain that we had to defeat. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Marvel's making them up. So, I mean, why not? Right. Why not? Why not do your deal? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. She, that was like really cool. Cool video. You like strolled into the wrestling room in Colorado Springs. And that's right. Was that in Colorado Springs? Wasn't it? Yes. Yes, it was. And, and we were able to do that because we've all passed the quarantine training and all that good stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot, like, a lot of restrictions, but we're, we are still able to train. So, you know, Reese does a lot of videos like that. He just did one where how wrestlers greet, right? A lot of tongue in cheek, fun things like your shot sled video, right? Yeah. It's still marketing. You're marketing with two world champions and yourself, right? You're a U.S. Open champion. I mean, you surround yourself with good people. You know, you elevate to their level. That's obviously the goal. But, you know, what he did was a Navachkov and they were doing like a bro hug that turns into like an over under body lock and <laughs> – um, I mean, Nate Jackson double lagged him. <laughs> it, it, it was just cool. But how much fun is that? I think it was, was that a TikTok video, Lauren? Mine? No. Uh -uh. What was yours? Instagram. Instagram. Okay. So, um, and Zab, you never know, because a lot of people take. Zeb, you're on TikTok? Zab, yeah, I'm on TikTok. I'm a 41-year-old <laughs> man on TikTok. Yeah. Uh, I just, I couldn't do it, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a 40-year-old man, 41-year-old man. I'm just like, I, I, I it's great. I, I just, it's not for me. I don't think I'm the demographic they're looking for. Um, but long story short, those videos, they still promote. They still promote and they still market. Whether you, I mean, they do. And I like that, seeing that side of people. I think that that's, that's a big thing. Uh, you know, what do you want girls who are going into it? You and I talked about this summer, but what do you want girls to get out of the sport of wrestling that you're getting out of the sport of wrestling, Lauren? Um, you know, I think uh, just everything, the character building, the discipline that it creates, the, the lifestyle um, that it has the opportunity to create if you allow it and if you pursue it with everything. And I don't mean, you know, a lot of people, some people walk away from the support and, uh, you know, the diet kills them and the weight cut and they're like, oh, that was terrible. And then, you know, but they never really researched it or figured it out. And, and, and what I mean by that is like, if you're disciplined in your diet, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're disciplined for a week or two weeks to cut the weight, but you know, are you disciplined enough where you start learning how to manage your weight where you're eating consistently, you know, all across the board, you're not going like this with your weight, you know, where you make it a lifestyle. Um, so those kind of things, you know, the, uh, the, the person that it creates as far as like confidence in yourself, you know, like walking around, like I'm in Austin right now by myself and I've been here for three days by myself and I'm just exploring the city and like people are like, oh, be careful. And I'm like, oh, I, I forgot that I am a, a young, vulnerable woman walking around in the city because I don't feel that way. You know, I, I feel strong and powerful and sometimes it scares me because I'm like, all right, Lauren, you need to be a little bit more careful about the things that you do. But having the ability and the knowledge how to, you know, um, defend yourself. <laughs> I think that's a, that's a huge one too, you know, and then having the confidence that you, that you're, you know how to do that, or you know how to protect yourself and things like that, at least at the most basic level. So, um, but yeah, the attitude, the discipline, the, the grind, as far as like, you know, the uh, perseverance that keep going through things and, and stuff like that. I think all of that can create, you know, itself in, in young women as it, as it does in young men. So the, the same thing the sport does for the, the boys, it'll do for the girls. And the lefty, yeah, the lefty headlock. The lefty headlock. <laughs> Some guy wants to come up and get tested. You know, he wants to he wants to find out what the lefty headlock. So it was a lefty, wasn't it? No, it was a right. Was it, it was a righty? <laughs> okay. And the righty headlock. Yeah. And the righty headlock. Jared, yours was a lefty, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I usually hit the lefty, but um, it just depends. I could hit the righty too, so. <laughs> He's multi either yeah, side. Yeah. So. Ambidextrous, Jared. So so you talked about the research and the discipline and things like that. And, you know, pushing through, um, you know, I believe last time you guys talked, you talked about recovery, the things you didn't know at the college level with recovery, I guess, how have you learned, you know, as you're, you know, throughout your career, you know, the tips and techniques, uh, you know, for recovery. Oh, a, that it's way more important than I ever thought it did <laughs> B that it gets even more important, the older that you get. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and sometimes, I mean, they always say sometimes less is more, and that is true, you know, especially once you get to a, a certain level, you know, I think, you know, a six-year-old kid probably doesn't need as much recovery yeah. <laughs> as, uh, you know, an athlete out of college or something like that, but, but listening to your body, paying attention to your body, nutrition is a form of recovery. Sometimes um, when I was at Iowa and we would have like a long, like grinding, grueling practice, I would not be able to eat afterwards. Like just like, it was just such a hard practice. I like, I couldn't eat, but I didn't realize that not eating was also the worst thing delaying do. my recovery. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So that was, yeah. So that was, that was not good either. Um, so, you know, nutrition and proper nutrition and um, my body recognizes it when like, yeah, Hey, I ate chicken and you know, whatever Chipotle people are like, Oh, Chipotle is healthy. Mm, uh, the ingredient ingredients aren't bad however you know how <laughs> like at what level like you know at what level are you planning to eat you know what I mean like so uh, yeah yeah so nutrition was a big one um also like sauna stretching that was a huge one too you know those massage guns you've seen those things too oh, yeah. I have one the Theragun or whatever yeah those are nice. yeah those, are nice. those things are awesome yeah, yeah. But yeah, stretching and, and doing those things and even getting like going to um, a sports massage. I was like, oh, I don't want to spend the money. I can't spend the money, you know. Mm -hmm. But then when you think of the, the longevity of the sport, you're like, well, how long do I want to be active in this? Mm -hmm. You know, and that, that so to me, my nutrition and my sports massage recovery. So maybe I can't do an hour a week, but I can do half an hour a week you know, and just committing that money because, okay, if I don't spend this money on my body, what am I going to spend it on? Something stupid probably. So <laughs> I might as well com commit that $30, $40 a week to myself and to my health and the longevity of the sport. And then the chiropractic too, you know, I was going to the chiropractor three times a week. I go twice a week now, three times if I wrestle Jakara. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, I go. So again, committing that time, um, to that, to doing that as well, you know, the time commitment to going back and forth and yeah, just making yourself do those sort of things. But recovery is huge, important. Yeah. Where do you see the future of this going for you? You know, people go multiple quad, well, very few of our athletes, men at least, go multiple quads. It seems like women go multiple quads. They go four years, four years, Olympic cycles, right? Yeah. I, yeah. You know, most women go I, that I've seen unless they start a family at a younger age, whatever it may be. Some don't go. Most women I've seen have gone multiple quads. How many quads do you see yourself going, Lauren? You know, how many would you say you're, are you into at this point? Right. Well, I are you in your second already. quad already? Yes. Second, this is your second quad. Will you stick around to 2024? First yes. thing. And do you go to 2028? Like I, I, a lot of this is like, Hey, how's my body feel? There's just so much. Um, I think Catherine shy, she's out there, right? Yeah. And she has a son. She's in another quad. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, that that's a big thing. Starting a family is a, a big part of it, but she seems to be balancing that well. Right. Yeah. And what I can see, um, and in talking to her and seeing her practice at the mile high stuff, but, um, how many more quads, do, you know, and how, how does your body feel and how much longer do you see yourself competing and then coaching? Uh, I definitely plan to go on and go another one, but you know, I, I just want to keep going for me, um, you know, wrestling. And I, I say this one all the time. It's, it's never about your opponent. You know, people are asking me, especially when I was doing this, you know, come out up against Allie, everyone's like, Oh, go get her, go get, her. I'm like, you guys don't understand. I'm wrestling myself. I'm not, yes, I'm competing against Allie but everything I'm doing is for the betterment of me. It's, it's for to see how, how much better I'm getting in the sport. You know, am I attacking the things that I'm looking to attack in my matches and stuff like that? So longevity of the sport, I want to wrestle for as long as I can. Why? Because I want to see how good I can be. I want to see, you know, how disciplined I can do. Like what, what is the absolute peak of this sport that I can go to. And I don't mean like, do I become a world champ? Do I become an Olympic champ? Yes. I want those things. But like, what is it, what does my wrestling look like at the absolute highest level? Like, like how phenomenal can I be? How good can I be? And, and I want to see that. And so if it takes me the next four quads and, 
my body, you know, is strong and healthy throughout that, which I plan to be, then, then, Hey, I'll go for quads, you know, if I can do it financially <laughs> also, <laughs> you know, it's not easy being an athlete either, but, uh, you know, just as long as my body can hold up and I can continue to do it, I'm going to continue to do the thing that I love. Coaching. Wrestling. Talk about coaching. <laughs> what, is that next? Is that, is, is it, does it go whatever quad this ends? Does it go right into coaching? Yes. Yeah. Simple. <laughs> what, what level is that kind of have your sights on uh, the coaching level? What, when you... Well, I tell Terry Steiner, I'm going to take his job all the time. So, nice. <laughs> but that's not the, I would not just jump. I wouldn't be able to just jump right into that, nor would I want to. Mm-hmm. Um, I would go straight to a college level. Yes. Um, I've had experience as a, an assistant coach um, at the University of the Cumberlands. And so um, I would uh, take an assistant coaching position. I would take a head coaching position at the college level and then work my way up um, from there to the uh, national team level. Nice. And speaking of coaching, you work closely with coach Duro, correct? What's, what's one thing yeah. you took away you know, from him? Uh, one thing, uh, this is silly, but one thing I definitely still do is, uh, <laughs> so at a, in Olympic trials in 2012, um, I don't know if you remember, but Metcalf had just lost to Frank Molinaro and it was a huge upset. Mm-hmm. And, um, I mean, Metcalf was supposed to be the guy going mm-hmm. to the, that weight class and he just got beat by Frank Molinaro. So all of the Iowa coaches were gone. No one to be found like anywhere. Like even all the HWC guys were gone too. And I was up wrestling and I was like, where's everybody? At? I was like, where's Coach Durham? And I was already freaked out because it's Olympic trials and it's in Carver. And um, so I go up to wrestle and I don't have anyone in my corner by myself. And I go up there to wrestle and I'm losing to, I don't even know who, some girl I should have had no business losing to. Um, but just because of the pure shock of Olympic trials, the fact that it was in Carver and I have zero coaches in my corner mm-hmm. and I was just like overwhelmed. And um, at the, at the break, I hear coach Duro screaming at me. He's like running and he's like screaming at me. And I look and I have no idea what's going on. I'm just kind of like all over the place. And he smacks me across my face and smacks me like <laughs> kind of like back hitting both cheeks, like this side. I was like, okay. And he's like, I don't even remember what he said. He gave me like three, three things. And then he smacked me on the butt, turned me around and sent me back out there. And, uh, I turned and all I remember hearing him say is you can win this. And so I went around and finished the match and I won the match and I came back. I was like, wow, that smack in the face. I was like, you hit me hard. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, I'm pretty sure I told him, I was like, you, you bitch slapped me. And he he just looked at me like, (laughs) and put his head down. But, uh, yeah. Um, so before my matches, I still get a good, a good slap. So I, I took that away. Um, coach Duro was such an awesome, awesome man. He treated his athletes so well. He cared about them as people. He was, um, a legacy. He, he really was, he was a, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful man, but I took the slaps away. I still do the slaps. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's so awesome. Uh, Hey, so speaking of our, our, uh, our partner, Josh Sasfi and Barbarian Apparel. Uh, obviously, you know I'm a huge fan. I got your shirt. I fanboyed and I wore it on the uh, last podcast with you. I had to go Nate Jackson tonight. But uh, what's it been like working with Josh Sasfi and Barbarian Apparel and the gear? And what's it like, you know, having a, a partner like that and, and having gear with them and, and working with him? Oh, man, I love working with Josh. Um, I love Barbarian Apparel. His gear, I honestly truly believe it's the best and not because it's like, you know, because he's my sponsor and stuff like that. Um, but his singlets, like they're so soft, like I can, I can wear them <laughs> after the tournament. Like, you know, you go grab something to eat, you decide to be that smelly kid and not shower right away. Um, I know you guys are defense soap. So yes, shower with defense soap. <laughs> there you go, defense soap. Let's go. better work that in there. Good work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks. <laughs> it's all about marketing. Uh, there you go. No, but his, his, uh, his singlets are so soft that you don't always necessarily notice them. You know, like sometimes like they're, they, back in the day, they used to be so tight and restricted. You had to get them off right after your match. And it's not like that with his singlets. They're super comfy and singlets is his main game. Um, but I love his t-shirts and the hoodies. They're so soft. So soft. I just had one on. I just had one on. <laughs> I just had one on. I just took it off. 
It is. Yes. I couldn't agree with you more. I wore one this weekend. Yeah. He, he, uh, my wife is like a huge fan of Josh. She's like, what are these hoodies? Yeah. And he, uh, he makes them. I don't know what they are, but they are phenomenal. You're so right on that. Like I have like uh, probably like 10 of them. Yes. Got a little bit of a hoodie problem, but, uh, <laughs> You know, the ones I have are awesome. And I always wear one to Jared's events, OAC. One of these, right? Like, they're yeah. The zip I wore I one uh, here. a pullover the, over the weekend. Yeah, I had a pullover over the weekend. Oh, yeah. yeah, I have that pullover. <laughs> he just, yeah, the, the guy really does. And I like it. He goes and finds different vendors. Um, and, you know, that's the name of the game whenever they're doing gear. Everybody's buying from different vendors, right? Whether it's mm-hmm. Hong Kong, China. Not a ton of stuff is made in America. Um, but when he always finds a good bag, the bags are really good. Um, yeah, I just, I got I, those. Look at this guy, this guy, right he's got, Hey, Hey, yeah. Hey Jared, is there anything else you don't have? Hold on. Hey, wait, maybe, 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 you know, Lauren already gave him a plug. Maybe, maybe <laughs> hold on, hold on. Wait, Jared, let's see what I got in my bag. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, J- Hey Jared, are you a, uh, are you a body wash? Are you a man? Hey, Lauren, are you, I, Lauren, can I take, can I, can I be stereotypical? Yeah, go for it. I'm guessing you would probably use body wash before you would ever use bar. I yeah. honestly use the bar. Thank you for breaking down those stereotypes and those barriers, Lauren. I, I appreciate that. I like I it. I like it. Baggy. I do have all those little baggies that you put it in. So I do make it look girly. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, of course, you know, if Jared's grabbing for products over there, <laughs> You know, I'm I'm staying safe here. I'm uh, conquering the impossible. This is obviously uh, wait, wait, Harry wait, wait. Scotty Burnett, Jody. I got one too. I got one too. <laughs> <laughs> no, speaking of Josh, though, so, and being from Northeast Ohio, you plan on uh, visiting the BA Center anytime soon, or? Yes, actually. When? Be, yeah. So it's sometime in December, um, before or after Christmas, I'll be. Uh, in Ohio, you know, visiting the family and stuff. So you make a trip down to the Hold BA on, I might have to put that in my calendar. I might have to do that. I'll be there. We don't have a date locked in yet, but uh, yeah, um, stay stay posted on social media because I'll be coming into town. <laughs> yeah, love nice. That's awesome. It's, it's slick there. He's got a nice little set. I still haven't been there, you know, but um, trying to trying to arrange it. So I might have to come down also. Oh yeah, yeah. you get you guys gonna come. You guys gonna come check it out. Yeah. But but yeah, I can and I will awesome i'm there yeah if i can be there i'll be there um that place is so awesome that the wildlife wants in <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> did you see that no did you see that a button buck listen a button buck a little like a little buck with a little just little antlers yeah was scratching against the the entrance front door yeah the front door <laughs> i was like no. what crazy you no, know, you gotta see the video i'm oh like what josh has got something going on in there i've never i've never seen anything like that before i've never seen an animal it's on his purse though. i don't think you put it on our bed. i think it's on his purse though <laughs> it's kind of awesome i'm not yeah, gonna lie it's it like really cool. just right there i mean just trying to get it everyone's like eh. it was it was poking the window yeah. the the double doors where mm-hmm. you enter it was poking it with its little antlers <laughs> he's like let me when you see it you're gonna be like oh my god that's crazy <laughs> Yeah, and he's put a ton of work into that place. You know, he's put a ton of work into it. He's got an awesome mat. He's got the wall mats. He's like ready to go. Yeah, I can't. I can't wait to see it. But, but you know, let me let me tell you about how awesome it is that him supporting us rather than like you know like a big corporation or something. Sometimes those big corporations don't always have like you know time to invest in like the individuals and stuff. But Josh, man, he he really does. He always knows when I'm competing and you know, not, he blasts me on social media, but he'll also send me like a personal text and be like, you know, Hey, good luck or this or that, or, you know, Hey, do you need anything? You know, let me know. But he, yeah, he's very awesome. And like how much he like supports us as athletes, the senior level athletes that are, you know, the BAs, he, he definitely does a great job of taking care of us. I love it. I love it. I, yeah. Great partner to work with for us, obviously. Um, he feeds the hoodie addiction. Um, <laughs> super comfortable uh you know the bags the gear he did the sandusky bay conference last year joe jared did you have any guys uh when when the tournament oh, last we year? didn't have any chance man that, that's no a chance um, but yeah you won the tournament last year at the perrysburg at the pit at the uh 
Sineski Bay Conference, he he gave out those uh, zip top fold over bags at clip, and then he would put the logo of the tournament on it. You know, and Josh is nimble. That's the other crazy thing about Josh. Josh Sasfian and Barbarian Apparel, he's nimble. He can turn around and do 14 bags and have it shipped to you. Like if you're a not planner like me, he can do that in, in seven days. You know, I'm not saying he can do that for everybody, but I could I can't believe how nimble he is. I can't believe how like his ability to adjust and do things on the fly and make custom things. He's really good at it. And, and it's like, it's awesome. And, you know, Lauren, like if maybe you're not a planner, Hey, I got something coming up and you forget. He's going to sublimate it. He's going to print it. He's going to, whatever he's got to do, he's going to do it and he's going to get it to you. It's, it's pretty incredible, actually. He amazes me with his creativity. He always like, he always asks me like, oh, what do you want for this? And I'm like, Josh, I don't know. Just make it look good. Sound like me. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm really like, not that <laughs> Yeah, I was like, you, you're the artist. You do your thing. And I'm like, yes, I love it. That looks great. Like, okay, now can we do it in red? <laughs> but... <laughs> yep. It's awesome to have that trust, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. I love it. I, it's like amazing. I'm like, dude, wow. Like it's amazing. And then, um, one of them, I was like, Hey, can you redo this logo? And they were like, he's like, I can make a better logo if you want me to. I go, no, they, they you got to go with their traditional logo. And he stuck with it and he was cool with it. But he's like, you know, I could have blown that logo out of the water. And I was like, I know that I've seen your work. <laughs> but, um, you know, he, 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 he's like, Hey, you know, I'm going to do what they're asking. That's cool. And that's cool just to have somebody like that who kind of gets it. He knows he's talented, but at the same time, he knows like, okay, I'll give them what they want. That's fine. And I like that too. You know what I mean? I like that yeah. too. And he offers to touch up people's logos and do stuff like that. And like you say, Lauren, he just designs things and you're like, yeah, get it. go print it. Go. Yeah. He he's really, really creative with that. Yeah. So Lauren, what, what did the plans hold between here and state college? Here in state college, because state college, it's it is the it is you won the open, so you're in, right? You're in the state college. I don't think that had to do. I don't think that had anything to do with it, honestly. Wonder, wonder, how are you in at state college? The final X thing carry over. What carries over and qualifies you for state college and the Olympic trials? Uh, I still have to qualify. <laughs> you, you're not qualified. No. You're not qualified. You won the opener. You're not qualified for the 2021. Correct. It was, it was not a qualifier. No way. Do you have to go to a continental? What do you have to do? Uh, last chance. Last chance qualifier. You have to do the last chance. And is it top two? Yes. Top two. Oh, my goodness. I don't like that at all, Lauren. <laughs> It'll be all right. Oh. I just wrestled through it. <laughs> where Where is it? What last qualifier do you have to go to? Uh, they haven't decided where they're at, where went, nothing, nothing's been decided. So, Hey, Zeb, I, I, Hey, Zeb, your guess is as good as mine. I don't know what between here and state college. Oh, okay. Sounds good. Lauren. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, I don't like that. Yeah. Well, okay. So the qualification is usually they have a myriad of things that qualify you. Anybody who's been a past Olympian, they're automatically in, right? That's a thing where if you're a past Olympian, you can just show up for the Olympic trials. You know that, right? That's a thing. Yeah. Okay. They also and have then, some athletes sitting out in, um, in some athletes are already in the finals of Olympic trials as well. Snyder, Burroughs. Jukara Winchester. Jukara Adam Winchester. Adam. And then on the women's, Adeline, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, Mara? What's that? Did you say Mensa Stock? Is she in? I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe. We don't know any of this, huh? But it's, it doesn't have to be an Olympic weight. It has to be an Olympic weight. So if you're a medalist at not an Olympic weight, so Dake, right? Yeah. Dake won, wins, what, 79 kilos, right? So I, I believe it's got to be an Olympic weight. So what does that do to Dake? We don't even know that, right? Unless I'd have to go back and let the, it explain like, you'd have to go back and look at the rule set. I honestly, this is ter absolutely terrible of me, but I only pay attention to what applies to me typically. So I'm like, okay, this, okay, that, okay, this is what I need to do. And then other people I'm like, oh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> so, no. um, but it's like, it's like really weird for the Olympic weights. It's this way for the non-Olympic weights. It's that way. Like it, it's, it's, it's crazy. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That, yeah. And, and then four, four Olympic weights for women. 
and then with the Pan Am qualifier too, depend on the weight class. So like, if you want, like, if you were the one that like went to the Pan Am qualifier and then you won, it set you out to, there was something with the Pan Am qualifier as well. The, the thing up in Ottawa, the last like event we had in March, right? Yes. That yes. thing. And then that was how Taylor qualified the weight. Um, that's the one that like really stuck out to me. And um, all the women's one. weight classes are qualified. All the women's weight. So if you, and you had to make the finals there. You had, yes. Yeah. You had to make the final. Yeah. Because uh, Zane uh, Rutherford got caught and pinned in the semis and that, that weight's not qualified yet. So right. that one kind of blew my mind, but all, did we qualify all four women's weights at that event? Yeah. Yes. It will. Um, Adeline's weight was already qualified at the world championships. Um, top yeah. five, if you're top five at the worlds, if, 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 if an American is top five at the worlds, you qualify through the next year, I believe is, is the qualification. I believe that's at the, right Olympic, at the Olympic weight. Yeah. Yes. If, you, if you're fifth in the world, they have two fifths, right? You're fifth in the world. You qualify the weight. you automatically from 2019. You, so here's, what's crazy about that. These folks from 2019 that took fifth in the world, it's going to be two years later. Those are some of those people are different humans. For sure. Not the same people too, right? And, and that's one of the biggest things too about, you know, like Olympic trials also, you know, they're like everyone who's already qualified is already qualified. But again, you're looking at it and like everything's kind of different now because like you're saying, every everyone's different. Their wrestling's different, you know, whether they're better, worse, what, you know, they're somewhere different on the path um everyone's different humans and then what about the guys graduating college you know what i mean like those yeah. guys and, yeah. yeah and then they give the nca champion and men's freestyle the nca champion gets a bid and that's different that's different yeah. you know what i mean like that's just different i don't care what you say it's different right and we're talking about a guy who in, in a month and a half who's been training to hold guys down for a point is now got to like adjust on the fly and do that's hard. That's not an easy thing to do. And, you know, you can look at all the dats, uh, the data and stats that you want to on it. A lot of guys have had a lot of success right out of college or when they're still training with their college team, right? Like that could through that grind, but you got a guy like Burroughs, he's getting older, right? He doesn't train the same in, as he did in 2011 as he does in 20 and 2021. He's a different guy, right? Yeah. So, it's just really interesting to watch. Adeline's different. Everybody's different. That they're, they're wrestling different, and I'm, I, I think Adeline's. I think she's gonna win Tokyo. I think Ad, Adeline's gonna. You know, she's been there and done that, and you know, she had a letdown in Rio, right? Five years later, she's older, she's wiser. I think she's still a better athlete. If she's healthy, I think she's she's right on track. You know what I mean? Like. It's just so hard to say, man. It's so hard to say. Would you agree with that? Like seeing it now as an athlete, what you guys are going through, how hard yeah. is it? Uh, no, yeah, no, I agree with you. And I, I think, I think that there's going to be some other women that um, medal in Tokyo too. That's, you know, surprise. Some, I, you know, I think Tamara Mensa, I think Jakara Winchester, you know, I, th I think all of them walk away with gold, all three of them. Well, let's hope. <laughs> i would love i mean if we won three of the four gold medals i might i would eat my hat i would be like ah oh, this is amazing like <laughs> i'd buy all their shirts <laughs> or you know wherever i'd buy all their shirts and wear them like that would be that would be I, you know it would be earth shattering it would be groundbreaking it would be to, you know like helen got it rolling in 2016 i mean geez oh pete's that would be you know, but it's so hard. The team, the Japanese team is just so good. <laughs> Their system is unreal. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're, they're good. They are. They are. Yeah. Lauren, what do you think uh, your, our, our women's system has to do to, to go to two, to win two, to win th three, to win four medals? Let's not get crazy and say three, four gold medals. What do we got to do to get three models, two models, four models. What do we got to do as a program in the United States of America for women's wrestling to win on the world championship, right? World championship, there's more weights, mm -hmm. right? What do we got to do to have the success in the Olympic year? And, and you know, what, what, what is coach Steiner telling you folks? You know, I think that looks different for every athlete, you know, the things that, 
Adeline Gray needs to do in order to prepare herself to win an Olympic medal is different from the things that Lauren Leave needs to do, which is different from the things that Tamara, Tamara needs to do and the different from the things that Jakara needs to do. You know, I think as senior level athletes, um, sticking to our own game plans on, you know, what it is that we need to do. It's not, it's not a cookie cutter thing. There's not just one straight line of like, this is what everyone needs to do. You know, we follow this plan. We went, it's going to look much different than, you know, for me, you know, for me versus them versus, you know, everyone's plan is going to look different. I think it's sticking to those things that are um, fundamental, fundamental for yourself. And so knowing yourself, knowing the things that you need to do, the areas that you of weakness that you need to um, close the gap on um, the areas of your strength that you need to continue to build upon, you know, and just close the gap and further the strengths. And that's, that's how you win. You stick to your own game plan. You don't worry about anybody else. I like it. I'm, I'm in. <laughs> I'll run through a wall somewhere where am i at here can i <laughs> through a wall you got me fired up like <laughs> Good. Of our program, you know what i mean i like the future of our program i like the i love the athletes i think we've got i think we've got the best women athletes i'm not gonna lie to you when yeah. you mention the names you mentioned i yeah i'm really fired up about the 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 future of women's wrestling is getting the sport sanctioned girls wrestling in the high schools separate from the boys Texas, where you're at right now, has it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Jersey was a big one, right? Um, I know that PA is really big push. California, mm -hmm. right? These huge states with large populations are really pushing for or already have girls sanctioned by the state athletic associations. How yeah. huge would that be for the, the women's wrestling movement in the United States of America, Lauren? Huge. You know, you know we did during quarantine, we did a lot of videos that were like, you know, sanctioned PA wrestling, sanctioned Ohio wrestling, sanctioned. And, you know, those were helpful to the board members and things like that to see. But I think it's, it's huge. You know, it, it, um, it's at the developmental, the, you know, the, the fundamental, the grassroots, you know, what those levels and things like that, that's what continues to build. You know, we get girls wrestling, um, sanctioned at those at that level at the high school level in in all 50 states and you know we're we're moving I, I think that's huge I think that's huge for the growth of not only women's wrestling but as our from for our sport as a whole you know as wrestling we you know we need that and speaking on that you know being from Ohio do you have any conversations with you know I know there's a big push like Zeb said and obviously we all know in Ohio for to sanction and obviously it's not happening this year um, and who knows how soon it's going to happen, but do you have conversations with, you know, those, you know, pushing for it in Ohio here? And what, what, I guess, are you doing anything from your, from your position to help or, you know, kind of educate people? Um, honestly, right, right now, um, I'm not as active as I used to be. Mm -hmm. Um, at one point I was the women's, um, state director or, you know, and I've given that up, gosh, six, seven years ago. I haven't, I haven't been in that for a while now, but, um, but it's huge. You know, why not sanction Ohio women's wrestling? You know, why, why not? Like what, you know, what are, what are the, what are the issues and how do we address those? Like, what are the holdbacks? What's, what's stopping us? What's holding us back? What are the fears? What are the, um, what are the reasons why we're not doing it? You know, what, why aren't we going to provide those opportunities to the girls the same as we are to the men? You know, also it only strengthens our sport. It only adds numbers. It doesn't take away. Why? It, we're not taking anything away from the men by adding to the women. So why not? And I think, you know, when we get to the, the answers of why not, you know, we can address those things. You know, um, you know, is it the fear of, you know, I don't know, all oh, the girls wrestle freestyle. You know, I don't know. What is it? Like, you know, what, what's the reasoning for not sanctioning the girls? You know, you're not going to keep the girls out of the sport. So, so why not allow them to wrestle other females? You know, right. why not make it fair? Why not make it even? Right. And, and the numbers are growing already. And then once you allow that, it's just gonna, you know, really take off and, you know, they're changing the sure. rules. You know, I, I feel like, you know, the national federation, the rule change with the hair and the, the, even the weigh in process, you know, it's no longer the girls have to wait to the end to weigh in. Now it's okay. Everyone's weighing in and they're, you know, they're, uh, they're singlet and, you know, that way it's, you know, it's part of the 
part of the tournament, right? The girls are part of the the boys and it's the same tournament. And I think that, you know, from a, from a rules level, it's changing. So, you know, I guess we just have to get these state associations and, and keep pushing, but it's, it's, it's exciting to see, you know, you know, from the rules and the participation. Yeah. And and maybe, you know, maybe we follow what, what's already happening at the U S the national level and, you know, at the USA wrestling events and stuff, the girls and boys went, you know, they're the same at the senior level, you know, they got a line for Greco, they got a line for women, they got a line for men's freestyle. Mm -hmm. And then everyone steps on the scale or you do it weight class order, each Mm -hmm. scale, you call somebody up, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, everybody in singlets, you just, you just adapt to that singlet weight. It's what point two, you know? So you gotta lose point two more, <laughs> but it's part of it. Part of it right? <laughs> Everyone's on the same, same level field. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. This weekend I saw a middle school girl. Hold on. I'm, I literally have the video queued up on my phone right now. Oh, it's no. one of the bazookas. Her brother's okay. one of the top recruits in the country for Wyoming seminary. Have you mm-hmm. seen this girl wrestle? No. <laughs> so you ready for my, you ready for another hot take? I gave you a Bo Bassett hot take. Yeah, you gave me I don't know what her name. first name is. Hold on. I have it. Let me, what, let me, let me listen to what her first name is. She is incredible. What's her Bazakas. last name? Bazakas. 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 Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me, let me listen because hold on. She is incredible. the voice of an angel there is that you that's zeb it's zeb on the call <laughs> on. here we go her name is she's unreal she beat an m2 training a david taylor guy in the finals like she's unreal her brother's like the best junior in the country jacqueline bazakas you ready hot take She's incredible. Look out for her. I was like, she was putting it on this guy. I was like, and she's a 60 pounder. I think was what the weight was. I was like, Oh my God, she's incredible. And she's like, not like her brothers or or one of her older brothers was, was wrestling in the duel as well. And then she's got a brother at Wyoming seminary. They, she is unreal. I, I think they're brothers, right? I think she's the sister to these two brothers that are like, they're incredible. Vince Bazakis, uh, Nick Bazakis, they're, they're incredible, right? She's, she might be the most impressive Bazakis. That, like, I was like, oh my God. She, you know, it was the finals of this dual tournament. And I was like, this is incredible. Like, I, I was so impressed with her. Like, she's really good. If I show you the match, you'll be like, she, yeah, she does like, she wrestles in all the positions. She chain wrestles. I was like, she was, you know, I, I'm not going to throw that. She's the Bo Bassett, the next Spencer Lee, the next Logan Steve. I'm not going to do that. Cause she's probably like fifth or sixth grade, but she, I was so impressed with her. I was like, yeah. unreal. The level that even well, youth, a youth is coming in and wrestling. Like this. she did yeah. wrestle like a kid. That's the thing. These, these kids wrestling, this, <laughs> these kids are wrestling they're getting so good at such a young age you know yeah. like the the youth wrestlers are better than some of the college wrestlers years ago you know what i mean like <laughs> you watch it and you're like wow you know it's all all the camps and clinics and the things that you know that are were available to them and yeah i i just their wrestling is evolving and, and then there's those kids are getting good jacqueline bazakas bazakas oh my god household name like I just couldn't believe how she chain wrestled and she's like kind of lanky Whereas the brothers aren't like that. The brothers aren't like these lanky guys. It was, so she might've been a cousin, but I was like so thoroughly impressed. I was like, wow, she is really, really good. And, you know, at a national level event, even when it starts to get into middle school, that's when there starts to be like a separation between boys and girls. There was not that here. She was like, she dominated. I was super impressed with her. That's awesome. Yeah, when you have someone who's that good, that draws a lot of eyeballs to it, right? I mean, she was really good. I was just just so impressed with her ability to chain wrestle and she attacked a lot and she she did she moved like a college wrestler. It was just really impressive. And I love watching that. I'm like really impressed. I mean, I'm sure I'm not gonna be super pumped here in the next year or two when the Miller boys are losing to girls, but <laughs> I at least understand perspective and think I get, I like, get it. I get it. You know, that's okay. That's all right. 
lose to a girl. It's not the end yep. of the world. We so thank him. I love you. Whereas, like, then- some some dads lose their minds. You know that, right? Like, oh, you lost to a girl. And Gerald, Jared is a hashtag girl dad. He's got four daughters. So four girls. Yep. You know what I mean, Lauren? So it's like a lot of these dads are just like they're either ashamed or they can't believe their kid lost to a girl. But all the more reason to sanction women's wrestling. Sanction sure, girls. They, there you go. Then you don't have to deal. You don't have to deal with it. Yeah. I mean, the girls don't have to deal with it. The boys don't have to deal with it. The parents don't have to deal with it. Literally, no one, you know, no one wants this. Why are we still doing it? Mm -hmm. Someday we'll be right back and we'll be like, why did it, why did it take so long? Right. Exactly. You're right. But you're right. You know, at the end of the day, but I'm not going to shy away. My boys are going to wrestle girls. They're going to lose whatever, man. That's fine. And my brothers can make fun of them because they will, but like, (laughs) that doesn't bother me, man. I get it. Like, I can tell you, my wife is, she's pretty physically imposing. I know she could beat up probably half the roommates I had in college. Eric Torres, <laughs> Eric, my wife would have taken Eric Torres behind the woodshed and beat him silly. <laughs> what do you think, Jared? I Eric probably, Torres, he, would, it's, he it's, wouldn't have had a chance against Sarah Kaczynski. He, it would have been a felony, felonious assault. He had some thick felony. legs, though, man. He, 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 was, he had some thick legs. Remember that? Oh, he did have some thick legs. You're right. He had some girthy calves. I forgot. Sorry, Lauren. This is a little inside. A little inside. We him and I went to college together, so we had a buddy, Eric Torres. But I don't have enough time for Eric Torres. No, we don't. Lauren, um, Lauren, is there anything else you got for us, or Jared? Is there anything else you got? For, what, for so, Lauren? what do you like at Austin? You're, is that the usual routine? You kind of, you know, compete and kind of spend a few days to check it out, or what's uh, what are you doing? Now? No, it just depends on you know on what's going on. Sometimes I you know, head home right away. Um, this time it just worked out to where I'm going to Indiana to work with my butcher sponsor's uh, daughter. And um, so it just so happens that I can't fly there till Wednesday. And so it was either, okay, I finished wrestling Saturday, late Saturday night. So either fly out Sunday and be in Colorado Springs Monday, Tuesday, I can't train at the training. So, you know what I mean? I, right. So, and then fly out to Indiana for two days or stay out, stay and hang out in Austin for two days. So I was like, but I'll stay here. In Austin, a bit, yeah, <laughs> Let's travel. Not a, yeah, not a bad city to, to hang out in either, right? It's not locked down, yeah. is it? Is it not? What's it's, that? It's not locked down. It's like you can go out and do stuff, can't you? Yeah, yeah. You can go. I mean, uh, I don't love the city, so I actually haven't been in the city at all. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm I'm in the city right now because I fly out tomorrow morning. But um, I just uh, I drove. I went I went boar hunting two nights in a row. And then I just, I actually ended up in Shiner where they make Shiner Bach. Shiner Bach, yeah. Shiner yeah. Chula this time of year, probably, right? That was an accident, but I ended up there. Yeah, there so that's go. pretty cool. Yeah. So I, I've been out in the country. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Hey, Lauren, how much um, being, you know, a senior level athlete, how much do you think you've sacrificed in your, your personal life, whether it's relationships, whether it's not starting a family, how much sacrifice has that been? And then, and, What's the stresses like that on that? And how do you balance it? Oh gosh, there, there's so much sacrifice, you know, and, and I almost think if you don't sacrifice for something, it's not, it's, it's not worth it. You know, like there has to be sacrifice in order for you to grow in a certain level. Like you, you can only get so far if you're not willing to sacrifice, you know? Um, but yeah, family time. So my dad, my dad's 84. And uh, so he's quite a bit older and uh, I live in Colorado and he lives in Ohio, you know, so I don't know how much time I'm going to be able to, you know, spend with him and stuff like that. And so um, family time is important to me. I have, you know, older siblings, my mom's older too. And so, you know, missing valuable time with them is, yeah, I mean, family time is important to me. Um, sacrifice as far as nutrition goes, you know, that's not an easy battle. Um, I've chosen to do the the meal prepping and that is a huge commitment as far as like, time it takes in order to prepare it. Number one, the time it takes in order to actually stick to the meal plan. <laughs> and then, you know, cost it's, you know, it's not cheap either. You know, it's not. Yeah. So um, sacrifice as far as that goes, sacrifice, you know, um, time with friends and stuff like that. Even something, something little, like, you know, um, I was getting ready to compete and it was one of the girls on our team's birthdays and, you know, everything that's going on, you know, we weren't going to go out or anything, but they're just like, Hey, you know, people want to, you know, we want to do something. We want to have like a cake or something, you know, celebrate or something like that. And I was like, 
you know, we can't A, the cake, can't have that. You know, B, like, ah, it's cutting into my recovery time. I should be resting instead of, you know, so just being aware of the things that you're doing and how much social time you're spending. And yeah, it's, it's all about balance. So yeah, there's a lot of sacrifice that, that comes into it. Not to mention the sacrifice that comes in with the, the, you know, the time commitment that you're putting into your workouts and things like that, weight control, um, literally everything, but it's worth it. And, you know, that's the decision that I've made. And I know that, and that's why it, it's okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's because it's all worth it. It's mm-hmm. it's all for the greater good. <laughs> mm-hmm. So right, right. I was talking to Coach Green. Well, I mean Sam earlier this week, and that you know brought up you know the letter to himself. He, you know, the, I forget the title that he wrote back in 2017. Of you know, he, it was a letter he wrote to him, his younger self, and you know the sacrifices he made at a young age, getting into coaching, and now you know it's you know it's paying off and and things like that. And it's you know to achieve great things, you 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 have to, you know, sacrifice at some, at some point <laughs> more often yeah. than that. Right. You have to realize that if you want something that not everyone has, you have to do those things that not everyone will do. Mm-hmm. You know, right. I, one of my friends told me, she was like, I just want to go and have a good salad with you. She's so sweet. <laughs> a, a salad, right? Not, you know, yeah. not a salad. And I was like, I can't, I, I, I can't. And she was like, you can't have a salad. And I was like, no. And she's like, what kind of life is that? <laughs> and I was like, the life of a champion. That's what kind of life is. <laughs> I'm meal prep and meal prep only. <laughs> Team meal prep. I like it. Yeah. Team meal prep. Oh man, Lauren. I, I yeah. I I'd love to ask Northeast Ohio questions. I'd love to. I love to have you tell Jared the uh, the horse riding story with the guns. What? Talk, will you please tell Jared about the the firing of the guns and the riding of the horse? Will you tell him <laughs> where you do that and what? I, I remember that video and I was like, what is Lauren? She's unhinged. What is she doing? Where was yeah. that? Um, so it's, it's called mounted shooting. And so what it is, is um, there's different patterns. So it's not always the same, but um, there's poles with balloons at the top of the poles. They're, okay. you know, blown up, blown, blown up. And the horse, you come in on your horse and um, you, you shoot the balloons and break the balloons and run a certain pattern. And the fastest time with all the broken balloons win. If you miss a balloon, it's plus five seconds onto your time. So you do not want to miss a balloon. Right. But yeah, you're shooting 45s off the back of a horse. Wow. My first 45 I ever shot was was Zeb's 45, right, Zeb? Yeah, that's right. So She's shooting. Sh- you're shooting like revolvers, aren't you? Wow. Uh, it's not a revolver. Well, oh. yeah, yeah, it is. No, it I is think those are revolvers. You're shooting mm-hmm. like an old school Western revolver. Yeah. Yeah. And in the competitions, uh, the, the dress is old school as well. You, you're required to either wear chaps or the women can wear like the super long dresses that come down to your ankles. Really? You, you, yeah. you had chaps and pants on, I think, didn't you? Yes, I did. <laughs> I, was gonna say, I don't remember like a big Annie Oakley skirt on or anything. Yeah, I no, no, I had, yeah, I had chaps on. <laughs> Where's yeah, this I at? Like... Northeast Ohio? This is in, in Maslin? Yeah. Is yeah. So there's actually Northeast Ohio, the Northern Ohio Outlaws is, um, mm-hmm is the club that we ride with. And um, so my sister competes in mounted shooting the way that I do in wrestling. I just do it for fun. Whenever I'm home, we go shoot uh-huh. and it, it's, it's literally a blast. Um, mm-hmm. But my sister, like that's like her thing, the barrel racing and the mat. She actually competed in Texas too bad. It didn't line up good, but she competed in Texas at the world championships uh, about a month ago. I think. Wow. Holy cow. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, yeah. How'd she do? She took fourth in her class. Wow. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Right. That's, I that's love it. Darn good. The Louise have championship bloodlines. <laughs> I love it. This is awesome. Yeah, right. <laughs> wow. How, okay. How much older is your dad than your mom? Uh, 20 years. 20 years. Okay. Is your dad, do you have older siblings? Do you have older, older siblings? Yeah. My oldest brother is 62, 63. Holy smokes. I have a nephew or I have a cousin. He has, is your dad, is your dad have two families? Does he have two, they have two wives and two families? He was, he was married once before and had okay. five children and then married my mom. Yeah. Literally the same thing as my cousin. My cousin has, he has literally, he's the same age as you. That's crazy. And he has, um, actually he's a little bit older than you, but he has, he has uh, uh, half brothers and sisters who are in their sixties. Yeah. He's in, his, he's in his 30s. Yeah. So, yeah. 
that's so wild. Wow. That blows my mind. But I, you know, that that's awesome that you're, hopefully you get to come back here and hang out with your parents though, during the barbarian break that you, well, not really a break. You're going to keep training and meal prepping like a maniac. I like that, but (laughs) get to hang out with your parents for the holidays. I hope. Yeah. Yeah. That's the plan. That's the plan. Awesome. Lauren. George, you got anything else for Lauren? No, thanks for your time. I'm glad we connected. And um, it's fun hearing your stories and, and following you, you know, following on social media. That's that's awesome. You know, you're like, we're, you know, texting. You're like, yeah, I'm going hog hunting. And then that, you know, seeing that pop up, I'm like, yeah, sweet. <laughs> so so my I'm daughters saying. raise pigs. They're in, you know, the 4 H and raise pigs. It's funny because we have the, the bacon in the freezer and they won't eat it. You know, I'm like, I'll, I'll eat it. <laughs> they won't than, eat it uh, a little i forget what they named it this year it was like i'm not eating charlie or whatever she named it. <laughs> a little, little different than shooting it i guess oh it yeah crazy. lauren did it have tusks mine didn't no it wasn't old enough so mine was only like eight months old i was like dang it that in the dark huge you, well, it looked it looked bigger in the dark when i got up close i was a little disappointed uh, <laughs> your picture of it was huge the picture was huge <laughs> Yeah, but I I thought it was way bigger than that when I was shooting it. Got it, got it. Hey, Lauren, are they harmful? Do they hurt? Do they they kill livestock? Like what what what's what's the deal with them? Are they harmful? Do they hurt humans? They're a nuisance and they are aggressive and they are um like like a pest here in, in Texas. Like they have a lot of them and they'll root up your like your ground and stuff like that. So your crops and things like that. So they are they are a pest. They are a nuisance here. So. Right. So they're wanting you to kind of, right. That they use the helicopters too, to kind of go through. Yeah. They Is use the any... helicopter. Yeah. Cause they, they want them gone. Yeah. You know, you have crops and stuff that, you know, that's money out of your pocket. Right. Yep. Yeah. It's like coyotes here. Like coyotes are overrun everything and you can, you can shoot a coyote with whatever you want to. It's like, cause it's such a nuisance. Mm-hmm. It's not like there's a coyote season and did, did that have a season or is it because when when an animal's a nuisance they most generally don't have a hunting season so i'm yeah. guessing you didn't need a tag or anything did you no Mm-mm. yeah and, was and i was on private i was on private land too so yeah 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 i hear you i hear you well thanks for doing uh thanks for the bacon and uh i'll expect a pound of bacon and the uh the uh when we see a barbarian or something i don't know Maybe all right <laughs> sounds good i should yeah. probably just ship this to you because is in the front seat of my rental car right now and i'm trying to figure out if i do i nail it what do i do with it it's in the front seat of my rental car right now (laughs) the animal well it's processed it's not like the whole carcass is just sitting in there it's in a cooler (laughs) how are you how are you getting it home are you i haven't decided are you checking it Maybe. I don't know if I check it or if I just like literally like ship it home, like mail it home. Yeah, it depends what kind of cooler it's in. You know, how, how many you pounds of ham and bacon put, do you put, put in a yet, you know, Yeti and ship it or keep it in the cooler and just keep yeah, it. Yeah, buy a four hundred dollar cooler. That's no, it. Not, you know, the, the, oh, put a Yeti. There it is. Hey, I guess if you got Jared money, you can no, do whatever. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I meant. The general, you know, yeah, I know what you that mean. type. I know what you mean, rich guy. Oh <laughs> snob. You hide out or bacon having snob you. Uh, but Lauren, it's processed in a cooler. How many pounds? How many pounds of bacon or ham or whatever? I don't know. It's it's a small cooler. It's not very big. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, right. I'm not sure. Five how pounds, much. 10 pounds, 20 pounds. Uh, eh, maybe 40, 30 or 35, 40. That's a lot, dude. <laughs> that was not a small hog. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I'm so impressed. So Lauren, thank you for the time. We appreciate it. I'm seriously, I'm trying to get to your, uh, your barbarian apparel barbarian, uh, the facility down there in Cincinnati, the greater Cincinnati area with Josh. I'm excited. If we can, if I can pull it off, are you going to do one night or two? Probably one, one night. And then you'll come up here to Northeast Ohio. Yep. Okay. You know, you know Dave Riggs too. I might be in the, at the Dave Riggs. Come on, Lauren. I, I might be doing something there as well. So, oh, that's a little closer. Mm-hmm. And by a little closer, I mean that only cuts like six or seven hours of driving off. <laughs> so the, let's try and connect on that one. Maybe if we can get on that one, maybe that would. But I want. I got to get down to the barbarian facility. Yeah, it's not the b- barbarian site. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I might have to just pull the trigger and do it. Mm-hmm. 
and it's at like seven at night too isn't it uh, it depends on the day it depends on which day we do it okay okay yeah just keep me in the loop i'm if i can get down there i'll get down there okay awesome. thank Thanks, thank Lauren. you lauren thanks for having me guys